kept it late, but a big three points. Just how happy are you with today's win? Yeah, I'm really happy with the performance. Uh, I think we deserved the the win. Uh, we played really well. I think we suffered a bit, but I think we didn't deserve, deserve to suffer that much. But yeah, we won the game and this is the most important thing. A goal and an assist for you. Your first Arsenal goal since March. Is there a sense of relief there? Back to your best. Yeah, it is. It's always nice to score goals and uh, even more for us that plays up front. So really happy with the goal and the assist as well. Level on points now with Manchester City at the top of the table. They dropped points earlier. I know it's early in the season, but are these the big moments, the big moments that can make the difference come the end of the season? Yeah, we have to focus on, on ourselves and uh, that's so all. We have to, to be ready for every single game and don't try to, to look at them, just do our job. Well, they did their job just in the end, but Leicester certainly did theirs in the second half at 2-0 down. Let's not forget James Justin, who'd only scored two career Premier League goals before today, managed to score two in less than 16 minutes to really change the script, Alan. Yeah, I mean, we didn't, we didn't see it coming at all, to be honest, but really got to, give, them, got to give them credit. Um, they work it well, get the block got to get the connection like he did and then all of a sudden you're thinking nah that can't really happen little bit of deflection but you, t you take that then all of a sudden the confidence and the mood changes in the stadium not only from fans but obviously from the Leicester players as well they, then they get a little bit of belief yeah a bit of luck with the deflection of Havertz here but this is the goal I was talking about before the break Steve this is phenomenal I think this is one of the goals of the of the season look at the technique and that he hits it with the outside of his foot Steve and you see the angle behind the goal it's bending sort of starts outside the post bends in it's a, a brilliant strike I don't think he'll ever hit a ball better than that ever phenomenal goal from Justin as a right back what a, what a strike I mean the way he gets it and the fade and the cut on it I mean it's absolute perfection um, we discussed the refereeing decisions in our first game of the day we have to discuss an important one here at 2-1 mm. Calafiori is on a yellow card this is with 20 minutes to go at 2-2 could he have been booked again? Well, I think he's lucky, and, and again, Leicester is a smaller team, and they, they might, this might go under the under the card. But this, for me, is a yellow card. He's clearly took him out, Steve. I think it's a yellow card. It's Sam Barr, the referee, said no. I mean, when or not he gets booked because he gives the signal again, and that's the right decision as well. You can't do that. But I think he's got away with one there. I think that's an awful decision. You can clearly see Calafiori stick his leg out. Deliberate trip. Yellow card should be absolutely such an important point of the game and to rub salt into the wounds one of gets a yellow card instead look he, he sticks his leg out it's a deliberate trip all day that's a yellow card but they stayed at 11 we went into uh, injury time but before that Hermansen made 13 saves in the game that's the most in any Premier League game for 7 years hmm. I actually felt for him because the scoreline doesn't doesn't say that at the end the four goals you can see the view of the goalkeeper take them out but some of these saves it was felt like it was one of them days for the goalkeeper yeah. he was saving everything making some unbelievable reaction saves I mean he's four of the best goalkeeper of the championship last season Steve wasn't he and, 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 and you see why in this he's been absolutely phenomenal some of the some of the saves are really are brilliant and they give him something to hang on to and when you're goalkeeper Alan you probably tell you better but when he's making saves like that you think it's going to be your day you've got something to believe in we're, we're, sat, we're sat watching this and we're saying to each other this, nothing's going to get past him it's just one of those days yeah. exactly that one where he's making save after save after save and then all of a sudden you're thinking the, even the Arsenal players must have been thinking not our day today you've got to give great credit to the, uh, to the goalkeeper but they keep on going Arsenal and they get what uh, what they probably deserve but we, we did think it was going to it was nothing was going to get past him and you can see what it means to him but ultimately Arsenal went on and scored the four and done the job yep and if you're going to do it you need a bit of fortune and they certainly got that with 3-2 didn't they yeah, yeah, there's a bit of luck, but, but Alan rightly says it was an offset play. I mean, how many times have we said that this season from Arsenal? I mean, they overload the back post again. Trossard's free as a board inside the box, and you look from a Leicester point of view, why is he so free? He just sort of sneaks around the back. But again, they cause so much carnage with the big centre halves coming up. He just sort of drifts around the back, and they get a bit of luck. It comes off in Didi. To be honest, Steve, it could go anywhere, but again, the set play coach on the side end will be claiming that. That's the reason why they won the game today. Yeah, well, you stop Saliba, you stop Gabriel, you stop Rice, you stop Havertz, but there's always someone else sparing. It, on that occasion, it was Trossard. And then, I mean, they're 3-2 down. They've got to push men forward. They've got to try and go for the the uh, the, 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 the goal themselves. Leicester, but they leave themselves open. Um, the goalkeeper will be disappointed that he's parried it right into 
into the path, but and, and he's not offside when the the, uh, the assistant doesn't it? he gives offside the linesman, but clearly it wasn't. Havertz gets his goal. A little bit of luck, but don't yeah. care at that at that stage. But, yeah, I mean the scoreline tells yeah, a different them. story to what it was. Yeah, they're very well not very lucky. They were they were as you said, 93, 94 minutes at two two would have been a very bad result for them, but four two looks comfortable, but it was far from comfortable. We hope to have more reaction for you from the Emirates. While we wait for that, let me take you to Stamford Bridge. I was about to say a crazy game. More a crazy first half. New football. Yeah, you can't have too many defe- <laughs> defeats like that. Because unfortunately, the scar tissue kind of builds up. Of course, he has to be positive going into that less address. I and mean, understandably so, the kind of determination which they show. Some great individual performance. Christian, I thought, a left back was absolutely outstanding. Indeed, his second half as well really kind of uh, stood up. But James also, Justin, two goals. The goalkeeper was amazing. Oh, a lot oh, of heroic yeah. performances. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you've got to try and build on that. He's no other option then to do that. But yeah, like Damien says, Arsenal that uh, second half wasn't perfect. I wouldn't accuse him of switching off second half. Just uh, give mm. Leicester credit for crawling kind of back into the game. But then again, recognising the position they were in and actually taking a big step forward mm. and saying, no, this game's not getting away from us collectively. Let's push, push. We're going to find this winner by hook or by crook. Well, we were bigging up the Arsenal set pieces pre-match and they had so many of them. They got one to count in the end, but it was Leicester who scored off one early in the second half. Yeah. Yeah, Devil's always in the detail. Uh, Kai Havertz may a fault here. Look at him. Oh, and he's, he's a yard and a half deeper than every other Arsenal defender. Look at him there. And that's important because the ball's going to come into his area. He just can't get to the pitch of the ball because of the fact he's two. He's a yard and a half deeper. That's the kind of detail that I'm talking about. No chance for Raya in the goal. I'll be curious as to why Kai Havertz is in that position. That is such an important position. Second man in. First man is the most important. Next most important is, is, is second. Why Havertz is in that area, I have no idea because... He, he just switches off, he wanders deeper than everyone else, and then that gap between Rice and, and I think it was Saliba, you know, as Kenny said, the ball came in there. Yeah. You know, the, the set piece coach is getting bigged up a lot. It's obviously his job to, to sort it out defensively as well in a situation like that, is it? Or do you just have to, a player should just know. Yeah, he was nowhere to be. be seen, the Arsenal set piece coach. Sorry, no, he was having a shower, he was having a shower and addressing him. No, you're absolutely right, you've yeah. got to be just as exact in terms of how, how you're defending. I'm always uneasy, you encourage too many of your forward attacking players mm. into the penalty box, not quite as switched on. I can understand why he's there, he's a big physical presence, he's a decent not head aggressive. of the ball. Not aggressive, no, and obviously in terms of his positional sense there, it wasn't right. To be fair to Leicester, they had a few half chances, a few decent chances, mm. so they were knocking on the door a little bit and they got there. I don't hear anything about bad defending for their second goal because it's a worldie <laughs> by oh, Justin. Like, like, uh, like Leicester came out, got the goal and then they were really pressing and it's a great breakaway. It actually came from, from the goalkeeper starting it and they go the full length of the pitch and it's a hopeful ball in more than anything else. Calafiori just overcovers, uh, helps um, Gabriel with Buenanote, just takes a step too far, Trossard can't get there. But you can't legislate for a finish like that. First time on the full volley. The spin that he manages to create, the pureness of that strike, is this is, this is the angle. Like The spin on that ball to get in off the post was superb. And 2-2, what a game. There's nothing better than one in off the post. No, there is. But, but uh, D- Daniel references there, Cali Fiori, one step too many. That's what it's about. Uh, I said I didn't want to hear about No, no, you're going to get one, it. <laughs> no, you're going to get it. We gave him the big up at half time, uh, and, right, and rightly so. He's uh, a wonderful talent. But these are the basics, these are the fundamentals. You defend them. One big step there back towards James. He actually flicks that over yeah. the left of players ahead. That's just a fact, you know what I mean? That's the defending at the elite I'll play, level. I'll play devil's advocate here because as a left back you, you want to help out your centre back right so as that cross is coming in because it was some so far away on the touchline slim chance is going to go at the back so you take a step they're going to help Gabriel but then the ball just picks up right and all of a sudden you know oh no I'm caught in a bad position mm-hmm. you're damned if you do damned if you don't because if he stays with his man and says I'm alright Jack and the and when a note they pulls off the back of Saliba you're pointing the finger at Calafiori they're great goals to watch those ones because you can see it coming and yeah. is he going to execute it he did Arsenal had a load of chances from then on and I don't know it's, James Justin scores two goals probably not even their best player though because mm-hmm. the keeper Hermanson made some inspired saves for a while <laughs> we weren't sure what to label this good Arsenal attacking play or goal <laughs> keeper um, I think we've got to give it to the goalkeeper because yeah. Arsenal are going to create this type of pressure my goodness he made some saves and not just routine saves he made superb saves gets a little bit lucky there with that one off the post with the kitchen sink is coming out from Arsenal ball gets cooled but this is a good save look at that I mean listen Havertz five yards, three four yards out on the volley not sure hitting the ball into a 3v1 I'm not sure Winks wanted that but he redeems himself give Ocoli credit he helps that the, the shot had to go near post 
Um, nice strike here. This is a crisp save as well, a standard one for him. But he was superb, and Arsenal really throwing the kitchen sink at this stage. Yeah, he was kind of very composed. Not just today, actually started the season very well. I've been in, uh, impressed with him. A little bit too composed uh, when he was actually playing out. We, we saw a few examples of that. But, yeah, it looked as if he was going to be the, the hero this afternoon, but wasn't meant to be. Not quite, no. In the end, Trossard owed his manager one, you said. It. I think it was half-time. Definitely delivered it. He certainly did, yeah. Must have been tempted, uh, tempted maybe to uh, take him off in the latter stage. He didn't. He stuck with him. And we speak about uh, the set pieces like Gabriel attacking that back post area. But we don't speak about this. This is deliberate as well. Keeping Trossard behind any kind of ball over here. Arsenal have a player the outside of the six-yard box. Look at Trossard just drifting in there. That's, just, that's not instinct. Again, that's worked on the training pitch. He can't score from there. All he has to do is put it back into the danger area. Keep his fingers and toes crossed that somebody gets the deflection. That's exactly what happens. Uh, I, I'm really interested in how he winks his position around the back post. Because he locks on with Calafiori. And yes, he's man-marking him. I don't know if we can get that an angle of that running again and he just locks onto him he must know Trasso has drifted off the back of him that's why as a defender if that was me or, or, or Kenny you, you'd have your man and you pick up the flight of the ball then you can go and leave your man because you know it's beating the lot of you you have to know Trossard is behind you sometimes you can get into this idea of that's my man and he's not scoring and I don't care about anything else um, I just think but maybe he should have picked up the flight yeah, of that if we are able to show it again we, we might do because I thought it was interesting as well that Justin we've seen that run so often from yeah. Gabriel where he steams in and he's basically unmarked at the end whereas Justin stayed with him and did what Kyle Walker should have done last week so you must think from a lesser point of view, we have this sorted here. Yeah, yeah. If Harry Winks here at the back, you'll, you'll see Trossard drift, and Harry Winks is with Calafiori. I mean, he sees the flight of that ball. He can unlatch from Calafiori there and go and get a header on that. You know, the only thing I can think is that he doesn't know that he's there, but there he must pick up the flight of that ball. You have to. I know he's not a defender, but as a, def as a if it was a defender or a centre back, you must know Trossard is there, and you, you, you detach from Calafiori and go and get a flick on James Justin. You're right. Gets right into into um, Gabriel's yeah. chest, face, and uh, <laughs> doesn't let him get off the ground. So yeah. So we speak about natural defender. How about we spoke about the first goal in terms of two yards deeper? Uh, wings there again. And gets yeah. Get locks onto Calafiori, but at some stage you recognise the flight of the ball. It's going to beat your boat. So they, so at some point he's not the danger. Yeah. Again, he only has to take two steps to his right and he goes and engages Trossard there maybe he gets the block himself so again devil in the detail quick fire post-match analysis <laughs> Havertz 4-2 initially disallowed for offside but you called it straight away it came off the lesser defender so no problem with this goal no no problem <laughs> Don't think uh, it really mattered. He, he was the frustrating with the whole of the game. Havertz had one of those games, and he just want to kind of shake and like in a dreamlike state for most of the game. Uh, I thought Jesus could have got his head up earlier here and made the pass. It's a good save from the keeper. I actually think uh, James, if he stays away from the ball here, the keeper actually pulls it uh, into his body. But eventually, Havertz uh, gets his goal. I don't think it mattered in the context of the game. But yeah, what a way to finish. It matters, Kai Havertz, I suppose, another goal for him. Yeah, a nice, a nice, easy tap in for him. Um, VAR correctly intervening there. That's why um, you know we can argue the, the details of VAR, but there are some good things as well with it. There uh, has been a bit of a, Arsenal fans might argue this point, but a bit of a discipline issue with Arsenal. They've been getting red cards. They might feel like they're the only ones getting punished for certain yeah. incidents, but in this case, you feel they might be lucky yeah, to have a Yeah, I think uh, lucky here. here. That's, his first you know, that's his first one, um, and I think his second one is worse than his first. He should go here, but I think Arsenal, with the amount of, I suppose the injustice they'll say, I don't think it was, with the Declan Rice and the Trossard and the false red cards. A lot of mourning went on last week, but they certainly got away with one there, so they have to be fair now, to, when you it, see that back. To be fair to Arsenal, they'll skip. It was a similar one late on, was there not, where yeah. he had, was on the uh, book? Yeah, I don't worry about comparing and see. You have to look at that one in ice. I think four out of five referees give the yellow card. But I'm saying the skip one would have been a, it should have been a second yellow as well. Yeah, it could well have been, but that one, that happened early in the second half. And like I said, I think most referees would have taken out the yellow. I, I, I understand why he actually didn't, and it's because the recovery position a party on the inside if he stays on his feet there for me party takes the ball if party's not there and he's driving to the edge of the penalty box with an opportunity to shoot or make a pass absolutely well, this is a Celtic game card. on the way so we better wrap what? things up there you go against who St. The Johnson there you oh, go fair play. Yeah, fair play in the Premier League thanks Damien thanks Kenny <laughs> trying to catch me out of the death there Kenny we'll talk to you again on Tuesday night for a Champions League game and it's Arsenal again take care enjoy Chelsea incidentally which you can't see now hit the post and had three goals disallowed as well in this 
bizarre, bizarre game. And I think Cole Palmer had two of those goals that were, uh, were disallowed yeah. as well, and he hit the post as well as scoring four goals. So you're absolutely right. It was a, just a mental first half. It was chance after chance, mistake after mistake. It was just unbelievable. See, both teams trying to play out from the back and, and getting punished on so many occasions, but it was that guy called Palmer again that put in such a special performance and getting four goals. Yeah, 10 out of 10 from the penalty spot for Cole Palmer now after that on Madaweke. Yeah, yeah, I think it was a penalty coming together and again, we, we said beforehand, he, there was a bit of time in between that. He was cool as a cucumber on from 12 yards and, and not going to miss. But we talk about the, the Justin free kick, this, or the shot here, this is a, unstoppable as well. It's absolutely phenomenal. We said maybe don't put a wall up as a goalkeeper, but even if you, if you stand in the middle, look at swerving away from, from the keeper, top corner, what a brilliant goal. Again, we're talking about playing out from the back. It's, it's, it's madness some of the goals we're going to see this weekend. Overplaying in the wrong areas. And Sanchez, you would say, the Chelsea goalkeeper was culpable for, for both goals today that they conceded and, and, and very poor at the back. Another goal here from the back, you'll see. His run's really good, though, in terms of Palmer, doesn't he? Times and the way of the pass that he, uh, he receives there. And he, he does the goalkeeper, doesn't he? Whether he gets caught at his near post, but what a day for him and for Chelsea. Absolutely. And another match, well, his third Chelsea hat trick, uh, and he missed what well, you didn't see there, a very good chance in the second half as well. He would have become the sixth player to join Allen and four others of scoring five in a Premier League game, but he missed that opportunity, but he did become the first player ever to score four in the first half of a Premier it's League. It's not easy scoring five in a game, Steve, you should no. know that. No, but it's even harder getting four and a half. I agree. Even you didn't manage that. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> I mean, he's have, his numbers are off the scales. Oh, unbelievable. He's, he's a special talent. Obviously, playing for England now as well. He's really stepped up to the plate and uh, he's been fun. I was just wondering, if, you know, when you see De Bruyne and Rodri and stuff, would he, would he be starting for Man City now if he had a stayed? But he made the decision to, to join Chelsea and it's uh, been a great decision. It's a great for him. decision for him yeah. to leave and he's playing and he's an incredible player. Yeah, and Chelsea up to third. Right, let's begin the rest of our round up with a huge result at Goodison Park. Welcome back. Goodness me, what a first half in the Premier League that was. To the Emirates, first of all. Uh, Arsenal 2 to the good. Alan Shearer has no idea what 20 go games without a goal is like, but that's what Gabriel <laughs> Martinelli had gone through before this. Yeah, he'll be feeling pretty special at half-time. It'll be a long wait for him. He's had chances. Um, but you keep on going, you keep getting in there, you don't shy away. Eventually, it'll change, and it has done for him today. And it's only what Arsenal deserve. They've absolutely battered. Is that a miss hit, Al, in the corner? No, it doesn't matter when you've not scored for that long shake <laughs> going off your knee, You'll your backside it. or anything, but it's a really good finish. Just what he and Arsenal needed. Yeah. Unless they thought they'd held out to one just before half time, yeah. but unfortunately for them they were broken again. It wouldn't have been the worst score getting it at half time one nil, you know, away away at Arsenal. But again, as you say, right on the stroke of half time, it's it could have been a penalty actually in California here. We see there's a foul and and before that, but this falls to trust it, it makes it look simple. He just opens his right foot, Steve, doesn't he? And it goes in a bit tight to the post, like but you know, you, you feel for less than now it's 2-0 on, on the stroke of half time. This is this could be a, a really I think the possession stats are seventy five percent possession in the first half of the Arsenal alone and the chances. It's all one way traffic and if you're Leicester now at this day, Steve could be thinking, let's get out of here with 2-0 and nearly take that now. Yeah. And a reminder, if Arsenal uh, score two more goals with that reply, they will go above Manchester City to the top of the league.